Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba. We are now joined by uh, a good friend up at the Essex Fells Country Club. He's Dan Pasternak, General Manager and Chief Operating Officer up at the Essex Fells Country Club. Hey, Mary, you thought I was finished with all my props, right? Oh, no. It, you're going to pull out a golf club right about now or a ball? Oh, a golf hat. That's much more appropriate. I thought you were going to pull out like a long like driver or something. Dan, is this just a golf hat or a specific golf hat? Oh, uh, that is the Essex Fells Country Club logo. I uh, I love it. Mary? Yes. You can't tell, but this is a, a ball marker with the logo. Dan, what's the what's the thing with the tree? It's just our it's our country club logo. It's been it's been our symbol since the club started in 1896. And PS, as a member, I want to make I want to disclose that I've been a member of Essex Fells for the last uh, several years. It's not about golf. We're not talking about golf. You can watch the golf channel for that. This is about leadership, management, communication, and the running of a um, of a country club or a, a golf course, uh, a whole range of things. Dan, question. How challenging is it in these days to lead and manage the organization? Well, it's, it's, well, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, it, it's just different. Um, the climate is different. Uh, the way that we're dealing with employees is different. Um, I think you need to be flexible when you're dealing with employees, especially uh, young employees. And then coming out of COVID, uh, the golf industry has been exceptionally busy and country clubs are no exception to that. And it's actually been a fun, a fun wave to ride. Here's what's interesting. We do all of our work remotely these days. Say I have some seminars, leadership seminars in person, but most of it is remote. You can't be remote in your industry, correct? No, we're really, uh, we're a hospitality business. Uh, we're dealing with people every day. Uh, that really is the lifeblood of it. When you think about the product that we're selling, which is golf, what we're really selling is is family entertainment and and a place of belonging. Yeah. Follow up, Mary. Yeah, definitely. I thought one of the coolest things when I was doing a little bit of research for this segment, Dan, was you actually received the 2018 PGA Professional of the Year Award. And if I'm not mistaken, the first New Jersey PGA section member to receive such an honor. First of all, is that is that accurate? Uh, y yes, it is. Yes. Okay, great. So I want to talk just a little bit about leadership and accolades. Okay, so pretty much as leaders, obviously, we all like to pat ourselves on the back. What did it feel like to be recognized with that award? How did that make you feel? Well, I, I, obviously, it made me feel great, but it was overwhelming at, at, at the same time. Uh, there's 29,000 men and women in the PGA of America, and to think that you were sing, singled out uh, is really incredible. Um, it's, it's neat to think that my work and the impact that I've had uh, has made an, a difference in the industry. And uh, I'm enormously proud of it. I, I still, you know, and that happened in 2018. There's times I still don't think it's real, <laughs> you know, that they might call me up and say, hey, we meant some other Dan. But um, but it's been a great journey and I'm very, very proud of it. Dan, you mentioned before about uh, particularly younger people managing, leading them. But I'm curious about this because Mary and I, we've talked about this on Lessons in Leadership many times, retaining talented people harder than ever because I, I think people have reevaluated their priorities to some degree and you know they're valuing their personal time maybe a little bit more and I think as leaders we can be more flexible in the way that we deal with the staff so they can have good quality of life and, and if we give them that then I think they're even more productive than you know when they're here at work so uh, we try to be as flexible as we can, you know, given the confines of the fact that we are a people business. Um, but I think that you meet the individual where, where they're at and you try to get the best of them. And if a little more personal time off is what they need or a little bit more coaching is what they need, then, you know, as a leader, that's what you have to provide. Quick follow up and Mary jump back in. But you know what, Dan, devil's advocate. There are times that you have to give feedback around performance to certain team members and the pushback, and Mary and I've talked about this a lot off the air as well as on, is you gotta, you gotta kind of watch yourself. You can't, you can't be too direct in your feedback or too critical because they might feel offended and you know, then they could leave. Dan, you can't run an organization like that. You've gotta give constructive feedback. You've got to not be critical, but be honest if someone hasn't performed. Go ahead. 
Uh, I, I think honesty is the only way to be with that. And direct feedback is, is critical, direct feedback to the goals that you're trying to accomplish. If I haven't defined the goals up front, if I haven't set the vision and given my staff the tools to achieve the vision, then I'm really not a good leader in any way. So I think I have to rally them around the things that we're that we hold dear and what we're trying to accomplish. And yes, you have to hold them accountable to that. When I do it, I try to do the coaching in a positive way, uh, certainly more positive to negative. Uh, but there are times where, you know, certain employees just aren't performing. And, you know, I didn't make this up, but I'd heard somewhere before that stress isn't caused by the people you fire. It's caused by those you didn't think, but should have. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know anything about Steve. That's Steve to you. <laughs> you know, as flippant as it may sound, it, it's true. Some some people just don't want to be a part of the team, and uh, and and at that point, you're you're probably better off making it making a decision, and uh, it's probably better off for both. Mary, we're not going to name any names. Leave it at that. Nope. No Here's names. The last question. No names. Go I would love the last question. I, I'm going to pivot so we don't get ourselves into trouble. Uh, let's totally pivot. Let's talk about customer service and leadership. Obviously you have your key stakeholders, the golfers that come in every day. I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, complaints. What advice can you give? I to have no idea watching? what she's talking about. Dan. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> My golf cart is so dirty. Um, so, so what advice do you have for those watching today who are in the customer service industry with dealing with unsatisfied customers and turning them into satisfied customers? Like I, I don't think anybody likes to hear criticism. You know, I certainly don't. But I think the key point there is to listen, to listen to what they're saying. Uh, forget about what might be hyperbole or, or the anger that they might be giving you in, a, in, a, in an individual moment. But go back to what they're saying and try to figure it out. And, you know, that way you can, hey, if that golf cart really is dirty, then, you know, what are we doing internally to make sure that we don't put out golf carts that aren't looking the best that they can? So I think you have to listen first and, uh, and then everything comes back to communication, communication with your staff, communication to the people that you're serving. Uh, I think that really is the critical component to success. Yeah, final point, you know, a shout out because the golf carts are not. <laughs> that was the only example I know because I Dan, I don't, I, I don't play golf, but I am the best golf cart driver in the world. I love driving <laughs> golf carts. It's just so much fun. Uh, that's, how I, I, it, that's how I got my kids to play. <laughs> there it is. And I also want to shout out to the entire staff at, at Essex Fells um, and, and Brian Gaffney and the team and the pro shop and, and the, the whole, the, just a great team, a great team of people. So Dan, I want to thank you for joining us. I look forward to seeing you out there and uh, wherever you play golf. Um, let me just say this. It is a wonderful sport. And for people like me who always have a calm, even demeanor, Mary, I just want to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> oh, I'm paying attention. I'll There's the eye roll. <laughs> I'm joking. Dan, thanks for joining us. Mary Gamba, Steve Adubato, we'll be right back. Lessons in Leadership. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Fedway Associates, Inc., Veolia, resourcing the world, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.